you look at the tag on your shirt, or your socks, or your tablets, or your computers, you may have noticed that made in USA is not something you see all that often. That's because American manufacturing has been declining for decades and employers are struggling to compete in the global economy. Now, in a new documentary, American-made movie, filmmakers Nathaniel Thomas, McGill, and Vincent Vittorio explore how Americans can transform their future if we are more conscious of what we buy and where it comes from. And the filmmakers join us now here at HuffPost Live. Welcome, Nathaniel and Vincent. Thanks for joining me. Thanks so much. Um, so much to talk about, really. Why don't we start with you just telling us a little bit about the film and why you made it? Well, it's, it's a feature-length documentary exploring the relationship we all have to manufacturing in this country. Because whether you realize it or not, we all have this relationship with the products that we buy and the things that are made here. So when we talk about this relationship, I mean, what, what extent are you kind of focusing on? You say relationship, it can be vague, it can be more specific. Absolutely. Well, the way we kind of came up with the general idea for the film uh, was when we look back at the food movement. So we started looking at the way that people were thinking about their food. People were really attracted to farmer's markets, sourcing things locally. And then that organic brand popped up. And so we started watching that and tracking that. And then, you know, today if you go in any common grocery store, you're going to see a section of that store mm -hmm. that's designated to organic goods. And the reason that that's there is because the consumer has demanded that. They, they've made it clear that that's what they want. And so companies and food companies are trying to figure out the best way to do that. So it made us think, of, think back to, uh, our, we both have family in manufacturing, made us think back to that and... Um, and uh, what happened to the Made in USA label? Yeah, what happened to the well, Made in USA? Well, because, you know, it hasn't gone away. That's yeah. the weird part about it. It's like it, you pay all the millions of dollars for these athletes or celebrities, but at the end of the day, when I see that Made in America, or even my community for that matter, I live in California, mm -hmm. when I see something that's made in California, I feel like I'm doing my part to help my community. Right. So it's like it's people like rolling up their sleeves, digging a little deeper, and kind of researching it and saying, you know, I see where things are made. And I think that by people demanding that and by buying more things that are local as well as from our country, it's going to take off and we're going to fix things. Certainly. Where in California, by the way? I'm curious. Burbank. Burbank. Okay. I'm from the north okay. in the sense that I was born there. I know very little about California, but that's not what we're here to discuss. We're here to discuss the fact that you're visiting, I'm assuming, California amidst the 32 cities in 32 days. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. We're going to 32 cities, 32 days, obviously to promote the films coming out August 30th in theaters. Uh, but also just to get an understanding of what's going on in each community. So we're talking to economic development people, folks in workforce development, technical colleges. Um, we've got had a few Congress people on on the on the tour, and trying to get a, the conversation going about what's happening in manufacturing today by looking at each individual community. So when we look generally, or even at an individual community, what small takeaways can you share with us? For example, what businesses can do, what consumers can do, uh, what kind of differences can be made? I don't want you guys to give away the movie. Well, <laughs> the, the film takes it from a look of a small company, a medium size, and then a corporation. And so we take all those to show how those different groups are affected by it. So it's more of a ride. We won't tell you more than you gotta, you gotta watch it in theaters. But um, you know, what we've learned on the tour, which is kind of a cool um, moment of just exploring the topic deeper, is the skills gap. That was something as well as the politics that we kind of kept out of the film. And there is a definite skills gap here. We were in some factories touring around and the, the guy would say, you see these two machines right here? They're not working because I don't have someone to man them. Yeah. Right. And, you know, we hear oh, unemployment numbers or I don't have a job. I mean, don't, I'm not going to say people aren't struggling. Of course. But at the same time, there is this sense that there, there's jobs available, we just don't have the trained workforce. And we're not talking about like $20,000 a year jobs, like 30, 40, 50, $60,000 a year that, yeah. you know, if you, if you embrace technical education and you do this in these communities, we could put people back to work. Yeah, so we hope the film really gets people excited about this topic again, especially the younger generation that hasn't thought about it in a while, because these are really great jobs. And I love that you say excited again, because it's true that in the 70s and the 80s, you might remember the Buy American. Yeah, absolutely. Right, so, so what happened to that? I mean, we actually were wondering what makes this documentary different. You're saying that it's yeah. to get people excited again, to galvanize people there's again, a, but different from that made in yeah, America. there's a different topic. story and a different narrative going on today, because we live in a global economy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, after World War II, we had a really robust uh, manufacturing base. That was great. There and we saw it declining as other countries started to compete with us. And so um, companies found cheaper ways to, to make things. And that's, that's okay. But uh, today you have a lot of folks making a lot of things that are trying to compete in this global economy. And the identity of that has gotten blurred. If you look at like a, a manufacturer like Kia that's coming out of Korea or BMW making BMWs in Spartanburg, South Carolina, mm -hmm. it's not as clear as it used to be. And it does take rolling up the sleeves, getting informed, and trying to figure out just a little bit about who's doing the employing in your community. 
And that's really the secret, because you want those dollars to stay in your community. And you just uh, asked a very seminal question, because it's a question that a lot of people probably don't know the answer to. And although some of the comments are a bit smart and fresh uh, that people are uh, chiming in with, this one's actually pretty on point. We need to educate ourselves in order to compete in the new information-based economy, uh, Boring File Clerk saying. And then Kathy saying, until Americans satiates the thirst for cheap products, outsourcing will be the norm and will continue. Mm, are you guys yeah. pessimistic? Are you optimistic when you hear these kinds of comments? I, I think we're optimistic, because yeah. I think the response to the film has been something that people get it. And I think it, it's hard, because things are so polarized, and we look at, like, like, oh, no one's not, no one's making anything, or they're they're higher priced goods. Mm -hmm. But you look like one of the companies in our film is New Balance. We look at New Balance Athletic Shoe Manufacturer, last athletic shoe manufacturer in America. They're they're priced very similar they're to the all the last, others. They're, they're the, the last, last left. And and when you go to New England and you see these factories and the people that take pride in making these shoes, just the fact that I realize that my wife, my kids, we're we're gonna wear New Balance, not because they're making everything here. They're only making 25%, mm -hmm. but they're making something here in this country. And I think that to me is something that makes me want to get behind a company yeah, that feels that way. There's people behind our products. Right. I think that's like the moral of the story is that there is a relationship that we all have and if we pay more attention to that and we can get behind it, we can actually do something about the issues in the country. And Nathaniel, I know you mentioned that your family is a manufacturing family. You come from that kind of a family. Sure. Why did you break away and choose not to go in that path? Well, really, I mean, the plant's closed. And so, I mean, uh, it was an easy decision, but you know, I think that what happened in our country is that folks that were working in manufacturing then, it was different. It was dark, dirty, dangerous, as you hear it said. And I think that, you know, parents wanted better for their children. They, they encouraged them to go to four-year universities. And in, over the course of doing that, we accidentally, unintentionally uh, marginalized a, an entire career path mm -hmm. for folks to go into. Like Vincent said, great jobs, 60000 bucks a year mm -hmm. to go into machining. These are craftspeople that actually create things. If you talk to any of the folks making shoes in New England, they are incredibly passionate about that generational art that's really lost. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can still do that. So, right. and, and when we talk about doing that, hopefully your, your film will accomplish a little bit of that or at least promote this you know, awareness and education around the topic, get people talking. I mean, what do you hope you know, people come away from your film with? We hope people see that they play a part, you know, the single mom, the grandma, the retiree, that everyone plays a part in realizing that if they look at the label, if they buy things or even know what's in their own backyard, that we, we can repair things, we can make things better. It's never gonna be what it was, World War II, we're a different world, but at the same right. time, we can compete and we can make it to where the prices will be more adequate and that we can you know, succeed as a country. Right, certainly, and, and Boring Fog Clark chiming back in, I guess he's so bored he's chiming in, <laughs> saying, was any part of your production for the movie outsourced? Oh, interesting. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I, it, we live in a global economy, so we couldn't shoot a movie without Right. Uh, a camera, right. and the, the camera itself came from all over the world. Right. And I think it's not about, see, we have to kick the dust off the issue. Right. We have to say, you know, it's not about uh, can we, are we staying true right. to uh, American-made spirit. spirit. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's about how deep do you want to go. Right. And it's about thinking about your dollars just the way people think in terms of buy local movements. It's who's doing the employing in your area, mm -hmm. and let's roll up the sleeves and figure that out. And sometimes it's not just the handmade craft lady that's making stuff in your neighborhood. It's Duracell or Energizer. Who's got the plant in your area, and who's keeping your favorite coffee shop open, and who's keeping your favorite restaurant open? Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. Right, and that's why we're so glad that you guys joined us and are making this case. And I want to thank you for that comment. It was actually a really great question. All the more reason for you to keep sending questions, although boring file clerk, I'm really concerned about your buddy icon, your avatar here. <laughs> I, I think you could do a better job. I know you're bored, you have some time, maybe you want to resketch that. Uh, but gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. And remember, you can check out American Made Movie August 30th nationwide in theaters. Keep watching HuffPost Live.